Hi guys, it's Heather, the Butterfly Effect, plant-based extreme weight loss, and this is Wednesday, which makes it weigh in Wednesday, and that is the day of the week that I come on here and I make a video and I let you know how my week went and how the weight is going, especially right now when I'm in the march to the last um, 20 pounds off so that I make my goal. And this was kind of a rough week for me. Um, last week I was having a great week and I took off four pounds. I went from uh, 156 last week and then I was 152. So I was super happy about that. And this week I weighed 151. And that, um, so I only took off one pound this week and I know exactly why that was. And that is that I struggled with um, some kind of grazing behavior, which is not normal for me. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. So 151 is awesome. It means that I've, law, I've taken off, sometimes I catch myself still trying to say that I've lost, but I don't wanna say that I've lost. I wanna say I've taken off um, 285 pounds from my highest weight. So I've taken off 285 pounds um, just with diet and exercise. I didn't have any kind of surgery or do any like pills or potions or programs. I like how Nurse Kristen said. Um, by the way, I did a podcast with Nurse Kristen and it was a really fun podcast and I hope you'll check that out and I will link to that below if you would like to listen to that. Um, so I struggled this week with, I said, grazing. And ever since um, I, what I call promise day, when it was the day, was December 1st last year, um, when I had a pretty bad food binge um, the day before and I decided to that I never wanted that to happen again and just prayerfully and really sincerely I made a decision that um, I was never going to eat those things again and and what I what I said was I was never going to eat animal products again I was never going to eat sugar I was never going to eat flour, I was never going to eat processed food um, again, or oil, that I was just going to take those off the table and not have those anymore. And to make it really official and to be like very sincere about that, I actually made a promise to God that I would not have those anymore. And so I call that promise day because that is when I made that promise and I'm the kind of person that might break my word to myself, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I gave it to God. I can't have it back. I, it was an act of surrender, um, surrendering something that was for not my highest good for something much better. And I have been extremely thrilled by the results ever since then. I know that it was an extreme thing to do. And now I wonder sometimes if it was the right thing to do, to be very honest with you, because just it's overwhelming to think that I will literally never have those things again. Um, and sometimes I wish I hadn't done it, but I did do it. Um, and I can't, I can't um, deny the results that I've taken off over 90 pounds this year. Um, you know, since Promise Day. I So ever since Promise Day, I haven't had really a problem with food choice. So I haven't been tempted by sugar, even when I've been around it. I haven't been tempted by flour things. And what I mean by that is I might have wanted it. I definitely want things when I see them, but I never seriously entertain the thought of eating them anymore. I just automatically go, oh, that's something that I, you know, surrendered to God. That's something that I don't have anymore as an option. And then it's just not an option. 
and I don't let my mind go there. I don't let myself like think about what it would taste like and all those kinds of things because it would just be torture for me because I don't eat that. So, you know, why would I think about eating it? It would just be, it would just make me sad. So anyway, what I'm saying is I haven't had any problems with um, food choice since then. I've come close. I've had a couple of rough moments. Um, initially, I didn't give nuts. I didn't put nuts in there and or like peanut butter um, as one of the things. And then I found myself like getting into the peanut butter a lot. So I had to, I had to put peanut butter on the list. And the same thing with fake meats. I had to put fake meats on the list. And honestly, they should have been on the list anyway because they are processed and they have oil and stuff like that. So anyway, my list has gotten longer <laughs> since, um, since I first made it. Of things that I abstain from, of things that I don't have an exception for and that I never ever have. Um, and I'm not saying that's the right choice for everybody. I realize it's really extreme. And like I said, sometimes I, <laughs> sometimes there's moments where I'm like, that was pretty extreme. I don't know if I should have done that, but I did. And so anyway, um, what I do have trouble with sometimes is what I call grazing. Now, my preferred way, if I'm planning out things and I'm doing everything the way I should is that I know in advance what I'm going to eat. I usually decide the night before and it's pretty much the same thing every day so I don't have to, I don't write it down or anything because I pretty much know what I'm going to have which is going to be salad and steamed vegetables and then for dinner I'll have starch and I know that I won't have more than three cups of whatever it is. So a three cup portion of chili or a three sushi, you know, rice. Um, and sweet potato rolls with carrots and cucumbers or what else do I like to eat? A half of a big sweet potato with a half a cup of beans and some salsa and some wish you were cheese sauce. Um, I tend to repeat the same recipes over and over um, and that's and then I tend to keep my food really simple. So I don't really eat things with a lot of sauces and stuff anymore but I do respect a good sauce, you know. I used to use a lot of magic mustard, but I found that maybe I was liking it because of the salt in it, and so um, I tried cutting that back, especially since with summer, you know, my feet are swelling more than they were. So I don't, I don't, I really am watching the salt. I'm trying to be careful. So several times this week, I would open the fridge and I would be like, I just want to be eating something. And because my choices are limited, I couldn't get in too much trouble with that. You know, I was, I ate a whole bunch of cherries. I ate three apricots. I ate some of those little mandarin oranges, a whole bunch of them. Um, I did a lot of fruit because fruit feels like a treat to me now because it's sweet and I don't eat anything else that's sweet. So I don't need any sugar. So fruit tastes like a big fancy thing to me. And so anyway, and then I had, um, you know, I had starch like during the day and I typically don't do that. I usually just have it with dinner because I can kind of get in trouble with it. I can overeat on it, especially if it's something really good like chili or Mrs. Plants, um, Pueblin, um, corn chowder that was really good with beans and sweet potatoes in it it's really good so anyway I did a little grazing this week and I didn't um, keep my meals to my meals and I didn't do my intermittent fasting as well as I should have because when you intermittent fast the idea is that you don't eat between meals and so anyway the consequence this week was that I only took off a pound and you guys know that I can take off four pounds or six pounds or you know I've, I've done both of those before. So one pound is great because it's moving in the right direction and because it isn't a gain but it's not, um, it's not how fast things usually go. 
So am I unhappy? Not at all. But I just wanted to share that with you because it is an awareness. So one thing that you might do, especially if you are in, you know, a, a food addict like me, I have some trouble controlling the food, although I've gotten much better at it. Um, some things that you might want to take away is writing down your food the night before if you're not like me and you don't eat the same thing every single day. Um, figuring, basically figuring out what you're going to eat at least the night before when you're not starving and hungry because that's a bad time. Um, I learned that in Overeaters Anonymous many years ago and I still think it's a good idea. Just figure out what you're going to eat so that if you think you're going to eat chili you can realize oh I'm completely out of beans or something like that so it also helps you with shopping and planning and just makes you put some thought into it you know and so that you're not making that decision right at the moment of hunger um, and then have three distinct meals and don't eat anything in between again that's a that's a 12 step thing but I think it really does work because if I flip a coin 10 times how many times is it going to come up um, as heads right if I flip it 10 times it's going to come up as heads more often if I if I only flip it three times it has fewer chances to come up heads and it's the same thing I'm just limiting my times when I have to interact with food down to only three so that I only have to make a decision to do the right thing three times and I don't have decision fatigue whereas every time you eat a snack or something you have to decide what to have how much to have you have to stop yourself from having more when you want more and it's just harder so it's easier if you just keep it to three times a day and and if you need to eat more at that meal then just eat more then so I like to do that and um, I don't limit at all or weigh or measure or anything my salad or my vegetables. I just have them till I feel happy and full. Um, I do sequence my food. I do eat the food with the least amount of calories first. I do keep it plant-based and whole foods and no oil. Um, I do stay away from sugar, stay away from salt, stay away from um, oil for sure or flour get off the sofa I love that acronym that AJ came up with get off the sofa no sugar oil flour alcohol and so anyway all those things um, help me a lot and the other thing is I was slacking on my steps this week I only you know I always got at least 10,000 but sometimes just barely like I didn't even care I was just not caring and I think that that is because I um, I just haven't been feeling well. I'm not feeling that great. I'm feeling tired, and I'm actually going to have you know surgery here pretty soon for a problem that I'm having, and so that's going on. I'm just not feeling that great, so I didn't do as many steps. So this week I'm going to try, and I'm still going to be gentle with myself, um, but I'm going to try to get a few more steps in, see if I can get it back to fifteen thousand. A day which is what I was doing when I was doing well so hey you know sometimes along the way you have a little speed bump and you maybe at least I didn't gain at least um, at least I'm using maybe like a bad day as good data um, when I got into some bad habits and and I don't want to take my foot off the gas now that I'm close to meeting my goal I, I want to keep cruising in as you know as quickly and healthfully and happily as I have been going all along and so um, I definitely am not going to let bad habits start to creep in at this point because I, I still do have a little ways to go um, I've got 15 pounds to go to get to my first goal which will be 300 pounds off even so I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.